Okay. I think we're live. We tried to go live once, but we're trying again. We're trying again now. Um, G'day, Griffin. How you going? Hello. G'day. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's tuning in. In true, yes, fantastic. Oh, yay! In, we're live! In, in true Bauer style. <laughs> <laughs> Coming, cruising in just two minutes late. Um, my name's Griffin. Uh, we're here in the electrical workshop in Green Square, Zetland. And I am Andre, and I uh, work for the Bauer. Sometimes Griffin works for the Bauer. Do you work for the Bauer full time or not? Not, not anymore. But I have been around a lot. I, I hope that You've been around a lot. You. Been around. <laughs> <laughs> been around. Perhaps. Um, I hope that a couple of you will recognise me from the workshops, from the repair cafes that we run here. Um, if anyone's made it out before the world shut down. Um, this is, uh, this is our dedicated electrical workshop. Um, and this is a completely different intro from the one that we did before. But it's better. Do you think it's better than the one we did before? It's better. I love this workshop. This workshop is amazing. The, in the first one, oh yes, we have to make sure that we have, we've actually had Marcus here on the table as well to make sure that we stand an appropriate distance apart. And what I was saying before was how fantastic this, this place is, that I didn't realise that you had a kitchen toilets, shower, you could live here. I could live here amongst all the electronics. If we could pan the, pan the camera around. I don't know, can, can the camera see over here to all the electronics that are that, that yeah, that's hanging out? Yeah. I've got Shane behind the, um, behind the camera here Hi everyone. as well. He's doing our audio and stuff. And I was pointing out the lovely well of soldering iron over there as well. So many things. And you've, you've um, uh, actually been in here, you say you're not, you went full time, not full time now, but you've been in here repairing stuff for, for a little while. Yeah, so yeah. Well, well, I, was, I was managing the space, so with, with a lot of the volunteers and, and anyone that's come along before, um, we, we run all our workshops here. Um, anyway, we are here today. Today, yes. Um, to talk to everyone about uh, just basic toolkit, um, the things that we, we use here every single day. We're definitely going to go through some of the safety procedures. This is not a how-to. We're not going to tell you how to fix stuff. We don't want you to rip stuff apart. It's not to be all and end all, no. But we will talk you through our basic toolkit, what we use, how we diagnose stuff, and also just, uh, I guess, in, get into the little bit of the basics of, um, of electrical repair. Yeah, and electrical safety and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So some of the stuff that we're going to go through, if we take a look here, we've got that. What do you call that griff? This one uh, is that this, like a like that particular like a connection, like residual a, current device. Oh, so residual current device. device. So ba basically, just <laughs> it, it trips if you if you uh, mess up. Oh, <laughs> we'll, right. we'll keep it that simple. Pat tester, which I found out stands for portable appliance tester. I didn't know why it was called a pat tester. Tester tester. Tester tester tester. Um, we've got, of course, um, pliers and screwdrivers, um, soldering irons, which I love, and of course my favourite subject, which is multimeters, which is a, a very, very uh, important bit of um, bit of kit to have in your toolkit. And there's other things in here as well. And apparently there's a surprise in this box here as well. I don't quite know what's what's in there. And of course, after every we have been prompted time, we to, have been prompted to, uh, to sanitize, to, to, to sanitize and clean ourselves all the time because that's just how the world's changed these days. So we're going to go um, through a few of a few of those things. Um, and so if we're speaking about electrical safety, mm -hmm. so we're speaking about, um, uh, I know that you do a, things very safely here and you have all these sorts of, te this, all this sort of test equipment here and stuff. Mm -hmm. But for people at home, I've got a bit of an a bit of an axiom because I watch a guy on on the web. I I <laughs> such a distancing flag. This is so funny. I watch a guy on the web called Mr. Carson's Lab, and he repairs a lot of old stuff. Okay, so he does eighties and nineties stuff and old radios. And he always says his axiom for electrical repair at home is, if you don't know what you're doing. Don't touch it. Don't do Don't it. Don't do it. Yeah. And is that what you tell people, like that's, generally for electrical that's, safety? Yeah, that's exactly what we do. And I think probably the best way, best way we can uh, represent this is to, is to kind of go through, if someone was going to bring an item in, what we would do. The first couple of things we'd do. Ah, so if, if someone right. was going to bring an item in, the first couple of things we, we would check, we, I mean, the first thing is never to plug it in. If you, if you have even a slight concern, if you're yeah. a little bit worried about yes. maybe it's going to do the wrong thing, just don't put it. Just in don't even room. plug it in. Yeah. Don't, don't take it near the wall. Yeah. Um, and that's something that this uh, we don't want to get too much into the technicalities. 
but, um, but this is a, an appliance tester. What this does is basically um, test for uh, a faulty circuit. <laughs> Social distancing again. Mm -hmm. Can we get a close up of this actually? Yeah, actually, mate. Can we try our, sure. our camera zoom in? So, this is a really, really, really basic model, and a lot of them are, to be honest. Um, they It's a Uni T. It's a Uni T, which is a, a mid range, uh, I would say. Anyway, we use them every single day here. We, we do them, uh, we use it to test electronically. We make sure that things are safe before we plug them in. Um, what it does is it basically runs a very tiny current through the circuit and it shows if there's any leakage, uh, it shows if there's any faults in the circuit, if there's any open circuits. You can test all your cables on here, you can test your power boards. Um, they're actually really, because could, they're so... Yeah. Could the Bangar Electrical Workshop survive without that thing. I mean, it could, but your lives would be a m much harder. I mean, what would this is like? One of your main bits of kit, isn't it? Like, if something's if something's got a mains power connection, if something's got a mains power connection, it goes through this uh, this tester, Absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely. Every single time. This is is this the first per port of call? I would say I would say definitely this is the first port of call. And on top of that, because the Bauer. Um, as I'm sure a bunch of you know, uh, we take second-hand goods. Uh, we have to make sure that all of those goods are working, uh, are functional and are safe if yes. they're going to resell them. So this PAT mm. tester is also really important. Uh, we, we make sure that everything is going through it, make sure that everything is, is tested on this before, well, before we plug it in, but also before we clean it, make sure it's functioning and sell it. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I guess the next port of call with Safety. I'm going to talk about the tags that you put on at the end as well. Yeah, sure. I don't know if oh, yeah, you put tags. I see those them. tags all the time. We have some person tags. I see them all the time. Actually, there's plenty of equipment at home that I've got. The bowels and bow tags. Your bow tags. I've got lots of stuff, and my wife knows about that as well. Um, oh, there we go. Um, that's the, that's one of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, the bow is in a unique position, and it always has been as far as electronics and furniture and bike repairs goes is that because it's a recycling and reuse center many of the items that the bower gets in they they can use those items to repair other items as well so you're using actually lots of recycled stuff mostly recycled and reused stuff here as well oh, but definitely yeah the idea isn't that if the bower needs something we we go out and buy something new that's not bow philosophy at all the bow philosophy is Try and use something that's already been mm -hmm. already recycled. Right, tags quickly. Well, just just that yeah, these are forward. these are some of the tags. They're not the official tags, but they are they are what we put on our items. They they basically specify whether something's fully functional, whether it needs some love, whether it, it's going to go when you take it home. We try and make sure that as much as possible, everything, if possible, is fully functional. But the bower has a mentality. You know, mm. we've always got uh, we're ready to take some stuff that's a little bit rougher occasionally. Yeah, and fix it up. And I see these tags on the in the bower stalls, stuff that's actually being ready to, to be sold mm -hmm. as well. Everything that's electrical will have a bower, um, will have a bower tag on it as mm -hmm. well, it's been tested. Um, so, after the PAT tester, which doesn't go through mains by the way, it's battery operated. So that's, oh, is that battery operated? Yeah, of course, so it's the most portable. Mm. That's, that's, the, that's the key. Um, beautiful. Um, <coughs> after the PAT tester, we go to something like this. Uh, it's basically uh, like a circuit breaker, it's an RCD. Um, again, without going into any of the... Uh, oh, it's actually got like a circuit breaker on the side of it here, so that's, e it? that's exactly what it is. Oh, it's like a built-in, like the ones you yeah. see in front of your house, that's actually got one built into the box itself. You nailed it, you nailed it. <laughs> so it's, it's essentially a power point that you can take anywhere and it's got a little bit of extra safety in there. So if something was to short circuit, uh, then this is going to go before any of your other appliances. This is going to go before any of uh, the mains is damaged. You're not going to you're not going to do any major damage. This is kind of like a, you know the the weakest link that's going to break first. Right. Hey, um, Griff, you know how these are like these. This is like a, a safety switch here. So mm -hmm. this, if there's an overload or something, this will fire back up. Mm -hmm. Do you know you know how we used to? I'm quite an old person. I remember the days <laughs> when you used to. <laughs> When you used to go to your, your circuit box and take out your porcelain circuit breaker and actually put a little bit of wire 
in there. I Everything has changed to safety switches now, hasn't it? Absolutely. No one should have wires anymore, should they? No one should have wires anymore, should they? Yeah, can you spray that down just in, just in case I'm getting Arnie Rona over everything? Um, yeah, everything's, everything's wise. Okay, so uh, have we spoken enough about intro for safety? We're going to keep on going for safety a little bit. So, Well, I think, I think it's important to note that everything we do here is, is with an eye on safety. When you're working with electrical items, when you're working with electricity, you're always double checking, measuring three, four, five times before you do anything. You, you, just, don't, you just don't want to make the mistake. And uh, I think a lot of electrical devices, tools like this, and also even the hand tools, all of them are rated, so you're not going to hurt yourself. And yeah. that's, it's, it's really important. They're all, you may have noticed, they are all red. <laughs> it's all yeah. a reminder, it's a constant reminder. Just don't touch the damn thing. You know, have you ever um, accidentally shocked yourself before by doing things? Have you felt what 240 volts from the mains can do to you? Regrettably, I have felt that. I have felt that as well. Of the, when I started getting into electronics and I was so excited about electronics, this is how excited and how silly you can be. Um, just for people who are feeling like they want to do more with electronics. I got an IEC plug, one of my first plugs. Oh, I was so excited that I had an IEC plug because maybe I could use it for an appliance. I was so excited that I got a power cord that was plugged into the wall and it was turned on. And while I held onto that IEC plug, I plugged it in while I was oh, holding onto the contacts on the other side. So <laughs> this is if you're not thinking, if you're not thinking straight, and my arm got a shock, well, I couldn't move my arm for about two hours. It really hurt, so yeah, it's um, that is, that is That is fair warning. <laughs> my, my <laughs> people that are, uh, um, stick, uh, stick directly away from the wall, always. Yeah, it can be fatal and hurt you quite a bit, so um, I'm glad you guys are taking on precautions. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we're going to move on to... Um, oh yes, let's move on to that. So we're doing, so that was our safety overview. Um, and now we've got some, we're taking a look at the tools that you guys just generally use mm -hmm. um, for repairing. Um, we've, uh, maybe we'll get on to these later on when we, when we move on to the multimeter. Let's move on to multimeters. Do you want to bring it down here? I love multimeters. <laughs> um, and if we can... And if we can have a bit of a close up here as well, let's take a look at this particular multimeter. This is a manual multimeter, a manual digital multimeter. And why is it called a multimeter? Because when meters first came out, they only came out in single meters. So you had a voltage meter, a capacitance meter, an ampere meter. Mm -hmm. But then they would start to bring these out, and they first came out in analog with the um, you know with a moving with a moving dial sort of thing. So Andre, just as an overview, what yes. what exactly? Just in simple terms, what exactly is that thing going to do? If we, if we, if you have that in your toolbox, yep. When what's the most common kind of uh, usage? Uh, the if you are testing a lot and repairing a lot, you are going to be using resistance and continuity the most. So you're going to be checking if electrical connections are actually going to be connected together. So if I actually turn this onto the continuity tester okay. here, but what does the meter itself do? So basically. It, what I'm trying to get at is that, yeah. I guess that it's, it's checking for something that we can't see. Yes, it's checking for something we can't see. That's what you're hinting at, of course. It's checking for either current or voltage. It's checking for the electro, um, uh, you know, the, the EMF. It's actually, sorry, I'm getting too technical there. It's, it's checking for current or voltage. And this is actually the thing I've got on now is checking for resistance. So you can see because we've got a steel table here, mm -hmm. I'm actually getting, that's checking for continuity. Like, is there an electrical, is actually an, an electrical connection between um, you know, between those two points. So that's resistance, but it's also got voltage, it's got amps, it's got capacitance, it's a multimeter. Do you want to grab the cord? It does, it does, it does everything. Do you want to grab the cord? Um, oh, do I want to grab this cord? Yes, okay. <laughs> <It's>, there, <laughs> I there really are, do. There are many cords in this place. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, what we're going to do is, just to give you, for people that don't know exactly how all this works is, I mean, the, the first thing here is, if I get a cord like this, I don't know from those two, from, I don't know from those two ends there, and those two ends there, what's connected through to what. And it is a European plug as well. And it is a European plug as well. So if I put one connection over here, and one connection over the other side, I test that one, and then I test this, I just have to, have to move it back, you can see straight away I can work out which end is connect, connected to which. So that, that beep is basically, what, what, what is that beep saying? That, that, that beep is saying that there is 
almost no resistance between those two points. So they're linked. They are absolutely, they are, li they're, they're, they are galvanically linked. <laughs> galvanically is the technical term. That's beautiful. Yeah. So oh, it's, it's just so wonderful. Um, and so what it actually does is it actually puts a little bit of current through and checks whether that current gets through. So it's and, similar. And we'll tell you in, in resistance. So it's similar to the PAT tester that we were looking at. Uh, yeah, it is. But what the PAT tester does, obviously, is um, um, much more specific uh, and um, much uh, and much more detailed, and you know, for, for higher voltages and that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. So there are so many different types of multimeter as well, and we've got lots of we've got lots of multimeters here. What do you think I should be doing? Oh, oh I'm I'm curious about the switch. Oh, if you press, okay, so if I turn the switch, do you want me to that, the that other way? Switch on it, that port. Yeah. Show sure everyone that there's a switch on it. See the switch here, and I just turned it off. So now, oh, now there's nothing. Can you reach in and put the turn the switch on, mate? Ooh, careful guys. Careful guys. Watch your hand. Uh, is that on? Oh. Oh, now hang on a minute. Now we're getting nothing. At now all. we're getting nothing at all. And is this is this switch damaged? See, that's really interesting. And I've definitely got that connected through. Hang on, let's just check. Just yeah, yeah, that's working. And now I'm getting nothing. And so, I guess this is this is a prime example. Oh my god! This is a prime example what? of one of the first faults that we often find in our in electrical appliances when they come in. Oh, there you go. That side is connected, but the other side is not is not connected. To, oh no, no, no. Oh no. Uh, it depends on how the switch works as well. This can get difficult you mean if it's when you put yeah, it's a double cut off and double pole and that sort of stuff. But this is the sort of thing that you that you go through when you're testing these sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, often often when things come in, and again, if you've ever been at one of our repair cafes, the first thing we check is for the lead. We we're doing a physical check. Those switches, I mean, those things are built so cheaply, and they're often the first point of failure. And it's amazing how many things you can purchase. Beautiful, like designer lamps. People bring in incredible stuff, and they have cheap, shoddy little switches on them. And then the first thing to go. So that multimeter did exactly what we were not able to see, were not able to do, which was to walk through that lead and basically signify that yes, it's working, or no, it's not working. And that, that's really a really good point to start in terms of your fault finding. Yeah, and if, that's just one of the functions on the multimeter as well, of course. Um, but it's a very important function on the multimeter. Anyway. I think I think the key is uh, is the multi in the meter. Yeah. The fact that they do so many oh, things. They do so many things. It's crazy. And this is actually one that's just got all the basic functions on it. I've got one at home mm. that actually uh, logs all your measurements and speaks to your phone and speaks to your computer mm. and does all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. But they they can get quite expensive, and. Uh, it's very possible to pick, pick up multimeters as well that are um, that, that other people have thrown away, you know, reused and mm -hmm. recycled multimeters as well. Do you suggest so, that? Because I know they need calibrating. Yeah, they do, but they do need calibrating. It depends on if you want to just, if you want to for just a little bit of easy use of just checking a voltage and a battery and checking a resistance and stuff. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say you'd need, need calibrating, mm -hmm. but the first port of call, I would say if you're going to be if you're going to be having a multimeter, you can buy them new, but gee, it would be nice if people were buying them, you know, ones that people were already selling on uh, Gumtree or something like that, so recycling them. You just have to be very confident that it was safe. Yeah, you have to be very confident that it was safe, of course, yeah. yeah. And and if you're going to be, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody using a, uh, using a multimeter. If you don't know what you're doing, checking mains plugs with this. Never, never plug your multimeter directly into a mains plug. Yeah. Like that. So they, don't they, do that ever. Multi <laughs> <laughs> that, is that clear sort of enough for everybody at home? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I never do it, um, and and they're, they're rated as well differently. And yes, there are they different are. categories, so yes. you can you can basically get ones that are really totally uh, they're based on working with mains, and then there are other smaller ones like this, which are which are it's a really good starting point, I guess. Yeah. Uh, which is basically for your you know 
testing batteries, things like that. That's yeah. a good place to start as well, yeah, testing things, things like batteries. Like batteries and stuff, yeah. I mean, um, I could get right into multi I know you nothing. could. I, I know, know I only have about go. 10 of them at home, <laughs> of all different types of ones. I've got Fluke and EV Blog One, and I do have a Uni T, and... Uh, I would, I would suggest if people are as excited as Andre, then, <laughs> then they should let us know and we can maybe even do a video of Andre's collection of multimeters. <laughs> could we? Do you think that's like an we actual thing that I do where I could bring people are interested, interested, and we, we could, could line them up? And and I could, we're uh, going to do one on the Switch uh, later today, actually. Looking oh, into oh, really? Them. Yeah, we're going to do a little video on... Um, there you go. So on that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the videos that we'll be putting out, because obviously, Bao, we rely on the community, we rely on people coming in, uh, but we can't do that, you can't do that, you can't come in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and put these out weekly, more often, or as as much as possible really, yeah. and just keep passing on uh, that can-do attitude, I guess, in terms of repair. How are we going for time there, mate? We're, we're fine? Um, are we going to... Should we should we be moving on to other bits and pieces in the toolkit as well? Mm -hmm. Jump to soldering. Maybe. There is one major beautiful. Do you want now? If you'd like, I can go and get the weller. Could you go and get the weller? Why don't you start? As well? Why don't you start on the Duratech and I will I will get the weller. And you can go get the weller. Okay. okay. Yes, yeah. that that would be lovely because I've been staring at. I've been staring at. At um, that lovely device up there for quite some time now. We're speaking about soldering irons, of course. Um, and soldering iron is, of course, one of the main bits of kit along with your multimeter. When you're when you're speaking about an electronics toolkit, and especially in a in a place like this, if you've got a tool bench, you are oh there it is. Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you know? Do you know what? I've I've got a Heiko myself at home. Now, this is another soldering iron here. I've got a Heiko myself at home, and I, I'm sort of a bit of a Heiko fanboy. Heiko is a brand of soldering irons, and so I've never actually owned a well. Oh, yes, I have. Sorry, I have. I've owned a smaller weller, um, uh, but one that was one that was just one that was uh, just that you just plugged straight into the power point. So it didn't, you want, I don't, I didn't, I didn't want like to this. confuse it. Yeah. But do you want to go through maybe just some of the simple bits, or do you want me to go through maybe? Yeah, some of this? I think. What are they? <laughs> oh, what, what is a soldering iron? Of course. No, you, you you go through it because yeah. I just because okay. I just cool. went through the um the multimeter. So um we have two here just to confuse the issue, um two of quite different qualities I guess, um but they have you've noticed they do exactly the same thing. So soldering iron is basically if you think about it. It's, Solder uh, is a similar process to welding, um, but it's basically used as a conductive glue, an adhesive. Uh, you want to be able to get, I mean, if you're putting wires together, if you're building circuit boards, if, you've, if anyone's ever looked at a circuit board at home, you'll see that they're, they're built up with tiny little, I'm sure there's a oh, circuit that's... board somewhere, um, right there. Can we show this up? Up close. I'll yeah, give that sure. to you, mate, just to show what it's doing. And everyone's seen these. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can see here, all of these tiny little silver points are soldering points. And if we turn it over, you can see that all of these are components. They all do different things inside a, a component, uh, inside a, uh, an appliance. Um, and up oh, close. I'll bring it closer. This yeah. close. Oh, there we go. Um, and so if you can see all of these tiny little points, it looks like there's a little bit of molten uh, metal. And there's also a little, uh, basically like a nipple. And these are basically solder points. And they've been created by heating a metal, an alloy usually. Uh, sometimes it's lead-based. Now we use less toxic, horrible things. Um, I still use lead-based. Oh. I know I should be so, but lead base is so much easier it to is, flow. It this is. is the thing; it's really hard not to. I know. It's a, I it's shouldn't. A, it has a very low melting point, and that's why yeah. soldering uh, and soldering irons are, uh, are so fantastic because they create, they they basically melt and create a impenetrable and a really really good conductive point. So you can you can make a circuit out of uh, different components, similar to you know some of the better quality switches. Uh, will be soldered together as well. Not most of them aren't. That's why they f uh, fail so quickly. Um, so basically, soldering iron. If we were to heat it up, we're not going to. We're not going to go there today. 
Because I'd probably burn myself straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, much no, your ability there as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, if you turn them on, the points, there's two of them, off two different machines. Good? Yes. Um, these points will heat up. You're melting the solder that you can see on here, and you're melting them onto the two different connection points, so you can create a circuit. You can also use it to desolder things. You can take things off. Let's step back. Um, Kiss myself. <laughs> um, so in that in that point, you can you can also take things I don't know off. That's circuit boards. Yeah. Um, mm. You can also take things off. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can use it as you, you can even really you can melt plastics and stuff like this. It gets really stuff. hot though, doesn't it? Like yeah. Super hot. What's, so what's the temperature that generally is used? Because so I know this one doesn't have an actual temperature on it, but I'm sure when this comes up, it'll give you the actual temperature, it'll, it'll, yeah? It'll give the exact it like, temperature. It's like in the hundreds, isn't it? Like 300, 200, 300 so degrees. So generally, I mean, there's no perfect answer because everything, uh, all different salt, there's so many different solar uh, types, different alloys you can use. Um, but we're looking oh, at different... about the 250 to 300. Yeah, there's, a, there's a different temperature for, for them. Yeah. For soldering wires together. When, you, when you're working on circuit boards, you have to be a lot more careful because heat is a destructor. I know. And it will destroy... I have destroyed components because when, when you're soldering, um, all you want to do is melt. You, wanna, you want to... Um, this is just like a general, a general rule of all soldering. When you apply the heat, you want to heat up the two bits that you want to solder together, that you want to make contact, mm -hmm. then you want to heat the solder that flows around those two pieces. And ideally, you don't want to heat anything else up around it. You don't want to heat, heat the component that that leg's attached to. You don't want to heat the plastic that's, like if we're soldering here, we don't want to heat the plastic that's attached mm -hmm. to that. So it can get a bit tricky. Soldering is um, uh, like there's a technique to it, you know. There's um, there's uh, yeah. I'm stepping backwards. Um, <laughs> oh, there, I have a friend. <laughs> there's, there's quite a technique to it. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and, and look, that it comes with experience. That's what absolutely. I'm and and it's and this is something again like the multimeter. These are things that we could expand into two, three, four hour videos. I mean, there, yes, please. <laughs> down the track. If if the people wish, if the masses yeah definitely let us know <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah look it's something that takes a lot of practice it's something that uh, is is a skill like anything other you know um, but it's relatively simple to get the basics mm. and again it's something that we use would use every day here in the workshop and these are uh, the multimeters that I got used to when I was a boy when I first got into multimeters when, still have from it? Dick Smith. No, I don't, unfortunately. I, I, I mean, I've got multimeters, multimeters, soldering irons. You have things. Was I saying multimeters again? Doesn't matter. Soldering iron, I've got multimeters stuff. on the brain. I've got stuff. The soldering iron that I first got when I was a boy was just, looked like that, and on the other end was just that. It was just a cord, it just mm -hmm. plugged straight into the wall, okay? And there was no heat setting like these have here. And this has got some sort of special digital heat setting as well. Mm -hmm. There was no heat setting. You just got the heat that you got mm -hmm. from, the, from the thing. So it was preset to 250 or 270 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So do you necessarily need... See, I'm speaking at home, at home now, but I'm not really speaking about that. I mean, these are the tools that you guys are using, and obviously you want to be able to change the, change the temperature depending on what sort of appliance you're, you are repairing. I, I would say the short answer is, is yes. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you That's should, short. You should get at least a basic one that has a heat setting. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah, Those older, older motive ones, they just, they're, they're you're so ready to destroy something. Yeah, my wife's actually got one for stained glass, and it's oh, huge. Beautiful. It's got this huge. It's got this huge head on it for, yeah, wow. for, for when you actually want for to um, for melt for, the, for lead. The, the lead. Yeah, yeah. and um, and it's like completely different to this. This is for heating up a very small point, uh, and the um, the one that she has is for you know for really heating up, like mm -hmm. um, putting putting a lot of putting a lot of um, of heat into uh, into a, into a joint to actually so, um, to melt the solder around glass. So yeah. So I hope yeah. everyone's kind of followed along. Again, we hope to maybe do something with this that's a little bit longer and more in depth in the future. Yeah. And actually do some soldering. Oh, maybe. There's Absolutely. been a couple of requests. 
for for videos about soldering and, and for like visual Terrific. walkthroughs. Thank you, people. As well. we Thank would, you. We would love to do that. Yeah, I've always dreamt of soldering live. I've seen I've seen I've seen Dave Jones and a few other people on the internet. Some some electronic stars. Um, they sold alive, and that's, that's some of their most famous videos, actually. I think Dave Jones has a video that's over a million views, and it's just how to solder. And so over a million people around the world have looked at this video of how to solder, because so many people are, are interested in it, um, because of, you know, electronics and do it yourself. Is it something that you can do really quickly? Because I've seen like two minute how to solder videos. Oh, right, no, 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 this is about, the, no, this is a longer, a longer video. He, get, he goes right into it. Okay. Um, so, right, now, if we're... Are we still speaking about the about the tool about the toolkit? Well, I think stuff? I think yeah. So we we want to talk through because we've done some of the bigger, probably like bigger, a bit more specialised items. But these are things that some of you probably already have at home. Um, certainly, I mean, we can start with some of the screwdrivers. They're definitely uh, you know Phillips head. Really um, do you, if you want to talk about. Some of the pro, like what would you what would you have in your basic toolkit if you if you wanted to start a repair what would you what were the first couple of things that you'd get the first the first out. couple of things I, I, I would get I mean actually I would probably yeah. probably a kit like this would be would probably be the best um, and there are a lot of but there's a lot of cheap kits like this out at the moment that I'm that I'm not that that I'm not that quite I'm not that quite keen on really but you can definitely get a, a what is, oh, what is it? Sorry. Well, this is a screw. Yeah. Didn't we even say what it is? We're speaking about screwdrivers. It doesn't matter. So, it's beautiful. It's, a it's beautiful. Beauty. Yeah. Don't worry about what this does. Just take a look at all the lovely <laughs> about of all the lovely jewels that are in there. When you were going to repair Can and I open it up. Yeah. When you were going to repair, how does it open? From the top down. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. When you were going to repair an item, you have to open the item up. And I have noticed now that when I go to repair some items at home, and you must notice this as, as well when you actually, when you're, <laughs> when you're actually, uh, you've got new items in front of you, there's all these different screw heads mm. that, that are happening. But there used to be, I noticed that it was all flat heads like this. So this is just called a flat head screwdriver. This is a special one that has a plastic sheath on it. So it's actually rated for, actually um, uh, um, applying it to a screw that actually might have a voltage on it that might hurt you. So even if your hands slip off this and go on to um, the main stem of the screwdriver, you still won't yourself. be connected, you still won't hurt yourself, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so they used to be all flat heads mm -hmm. when, they, when the, they were first doing it, but now there's Phillips head, so it's this, this star, and there's another one, is it? That's like the Phillips head. Is it torque or? Well, that's that's something. the thing. So it gets all very confusing for me. Um, I think this is a, this is a really basic toolkit. Um, you, there's already some missing because there have to be some missing because that, oh, yeah. ha that happens within about two minutes of, <laughs> of any kit like this being purchased. Oh, but I like that one. Yeah. Well, what 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 Andre was just speaking to is is that it used to be very simple. There used to be a couple of different screws, and some of the, some of these new screw uh, bits were actually developed with a purpose in mind. Some of them some of them are really smart. Some of them prevent stripping. Uh, you know, prevent uh, so damaging. It screws. wasn't just everything else companies do these days, which is deliberately come up with something that we can't get into, so we can't repair it. The right to repair. The political angle. <laughs> uh, you, uh, what, what do you think? Do you think any of those were made so companies yeah. so that you had to return it so you couldn't repair the thing? A hundred percent. They were. So some of the, some of these are gen genuinely useful. Um, some of them are basically there to stop people from getting in, uh, to stop people from from, from hurting themselves. Yeah, well, that's the thing. In the, in the, I think they. Uh, I think a lot of manufacturers hide under the umbrella of safety. They try and say. We don't want you going into this thing. We don't want you going in because you're going to hurt yourself. Yes. At the end of the day, if you take it to the right person or if you have enough knowledge and information and experience yourself, these things can be repaired. It's really simple. So a lot of these screwdriver bits will, you know, that you'll come across them if you're, if you're repairing, if you're taking stuff apart. And I mean, it even gets as mad. Here's the big reveal. I don't know what's in this box yet. You will. I hope, I hope you'll be happy. 
Um, this is from this oh. is a lot more <gasps> expensive. And when you, when you get to oh, that point, goodness me, that is awesome. You know, I mean that that this kit is basically has been advertised almost as this is what you need to get into electronics. This is what you need to get into your day to day. Um, you know, and without going into it again, there's. Does that get you into it? So will that get will that get you into like phones and? Yeah. So this is this is actually. A sp I think, I think, is, it it? is it here? Is it here? Is that better? <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah just, that's I'm, I'm just trying to get it. In, I'm trying to get it in the middle of the screen. Nailed it. And again, oh man, that's got everything. Well, there's one missing, of course. Oh no! Is um, there? Yeah, of course. But there is. It's, maybe it's just on the end of the. No, it's missing. Um, oh, that is so this annoying. Is, this is designed for phones, for computers, for other electronic appliances, and for your everyday as well. So it's got your Phillips head, it's got your Torx, that kind of stuff. This is a little bit more expensive, but seriously, that is the go-to. Look, it's even got the square, yeah. the elusive square, sort of Alany ones and stuff as well. Look, it's even got a triangle one. Has anyone seen it? <laughs> Has anyone seen a triangle bit before? Has anyone seen that sort of screw head? Take a look at that. They they come in all the time. What do they? Yeah. I've never That's seen cool. a screw with it's a tri. Is that focusing, mate? There's I've usually, never seen a triangle head before. That is crazy. There's usually, what manufacturers do, and we were speaking to it before, yeah. what they do is they put one screw in with this. They screen. don't. Yeah, absolutely. Do so they really? Toasters, all the time, they have one triangle or one tri-wing, one difficult screw. Rotters. <laughs> Absolute rotters. Um, yeah, but anyway, something like this will, will, will be a go-to every single day. Do you want to talk about some of the... Uh, Pliers, cutters. Yes, um, I think like and I didn't when I was first starting out with electronics. I didn't really know. I didn't know. Just get Andy Rainer off there, can we? Thanks. Thanks for that, mate. Cheers. I didn't know how important it was to have a really good pair of side cutters. Oh. Like oh my god. <laughs> I used to have something like you know what I used to used to use was the inside yeah, okay. of a pair of pliers. And in, so, a, in a pinch, that will still work. In a pinch? <gasps> I didn't even mean you that. You didn't even mean that. Um, so if you can see, this is what I used to use. So this is just a, a pair of pliers which needs a little bit of work on it. They, they feel a little bit rusty, these ones. But if you can see here, most pliers come with, this, with these blades in here as well, which allow you to both, uh, this, you know, obviously this is to grip, but this is also also to cut in here, and I this is what I was using to to cut all my things with. So, but then as I got more and more sophisticated, I wanted to cut, for instance, uh, legs off the bottom PCBs and be more accurate with my cutting. And the day I got myself a pair of proper, they're called side cutters, um, and you can see the angle on them. Can you see that angle, Shane? If I so the angle is so it can go right close down to a surface and cut and take it off right down close to the surface. A good pair of side cutters. And my first pair of side cutters that I bought, I, I, I was using them to cut various things and then after a while they didn't work anymore. And I'm like, why aren't these working? And when I put them up to the sun, when I put them up to the sun and I wore a bright light behind it, I could see tiny little holes. I'd used them on steel and copper that was too large and things that I shouldn't have actually used them on. And it wasn't very good metal either. Uh, so now okay. I've, I've, I've got myself a pair of, of side cutters that are um, really hardened metal. Mm -hmm. um, just, How long have they lasted? Um, I, I've made them last now for about two years without getting a hole a hole in them. So right. side cutters are so, so important. You, it's a, they're, they're amazingly important. Um, you've got a number of pliers here. We've got some, some about 30 degree or was it 20 degree pliers. We've got some straight pliers. What, what kind of stuff would you use those for? For fishing out, um, for fishing out screws when you've accidentally dropped them down the bottom of a bottom of a <laughs> of a compartment <laughs> no you did that I, I, I'm guessing from the response that this happened before a yeah of times. yeah it's happened many times oh man there's so many different uses for this I mean mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't even start to tell you how many uses there are the, n numerous from you know uh, bending over wire and um, 
and taking tabs off and holding on to things and uh, sometimes I wish what, what's the type of thing you use if you're going to use um, a pair of pliers like this but you want it to stay can I have some what of that? do you mean you want it to stay well I want to hang on to something but I want to let go and not have them jump open ah because I've got some at home but they're not this little to be honest I've just removed the spring Oh really? Have you done that before? And use and you can even use an elastic band and close that. And out. I've done that. So you've actually done that before yeah. as well. Yeah, I wrecked one. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> Don't think I could get the, sc uh, the spring back in. But I needed it for a very specific purpose, and so that's exactly what I did. Nice you one. You can you can get ones that are opposite as well for for doing things like circlips. I mean, this you can see that's like one small part of, of a bigger uh, kit. I think that came with like six or seven. Um, Duratec, that's um, oh, that's um, uh, you, you want some Duratec gear? Uh, yeah, but no, Duratec's from what's the what's the name of the electronic supply shop on uh, as we drive? J car. J car. That's it. This Duratec is a J car brand. I'm pretty sure. J car sponsor us. Do they? No, no, oh. no. I'm <laughs> saying please, <laughs> please, 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 please sponsor us. Sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we don't no, sponsors. No, 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 no. no, we don't need sponsors. No, we don't need We've sponsors. got everything here. We've got all no, our tools. No, because you don't want to go buying new stuff from JCAR all the time and putting more plastics and more <laughs> metals and stuff into the environment. We do not want that. Oh, what a minefield. Do you want to talk about the um, the cable now, strippers? Oh, where's, where's our other things? So we'll make oh, it this is beautiful. This is a close-up moment. Can you do it though? Yeah, because sure. because I'm not confident about it. I haven't got a pair of these at home. These are wire strippers. When you want to remove plastic from around uh, a braided wire or, or so why, why is like, that sheath like there? that? Why is this sheath here yeah. why is around that? that? So that the main reason that you have this is actually this is actually double. This is actually double insulated. It's actually got an insulation around it. Here and then another insulation around it. Here mm -hmm. is that you don't you don't actually touch it. It doesn't make an electronic connection with anything else. And these two wires don't make an electrical connection between themselves either. Isolating it. It is, it is isolating mm -hmm. electrically. So these blue this blue plastic here is because these two both go into this casing here, mm -hmm. make sure that these two don't touch each other mm -hmm. as it runs through this cord, mm -hmm. and then this. The black one on the outside here obviously keeps these two together and is an extra protection for them as mm -hmm. well, so it's double insulated. But if you want to make a connection with the end of one of these, you mm -hmm. obviously have to take off some of this insulation. It's called insulation, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I used my mouth for the first 20 years. <laughs> I really did. Even, <laughs> even for this, I had a gap in my teeth that was actually the perfect amount and I think I've actually ruined my teeth doing it. So That's when so I was incredible. first into electronics and I had much smaller wires than this, I would actually strip off off with my teeth. Would you recommend that for? Uh, no, <laughs> no, because it can actually. I actually one day got a bit of copper in between my teeth. Now, can oh, you try man. imagine getting a bit of metal in between your teeth and trying yeah. to get it out? It was in there and it really hurt. I don't do do that anymore. But these are proper wire strippers, um, and you can actually, if you're good enough, can you just. We just come in here. This is the because I don't have wire strippers at home. This is the way that I actually take. Oh, and see that's what happens there if you if you, if you do it too hard. As a blooper reel. Yeah, yeah. This is the way that I that I take wire off. See how I did that then. So I actually just. Um, I think we're going to need more. Are we going to need more wire with insulation? So under to under the there? bench there. Yes. There's a bunch of uh, leaves. Um, oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So two core flakes, just regular leads. Yeah. Let's um, grab this one here. So, oh, perfect. So, do you want me to do it? Or yes, do you, you, do you it? please do it. Okay. Proper wire strippers with an amazing mechanism in it. Spray. I oh, know. Spray. Spray. Put it down and then spray it. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to spray hand. <laughs> to be honest, I'm just enjoying the process. Oh, there's my other cloth. There you go. So, do you want to get a close up on this guy? Yeah. Yeah. So, what Andre, so much fun. What Andre was just talking about, with these things, you can basically see, we'll try and show the mechanism. Is that nice and focused? Just a little down. Like yeah, that? great. Oh, yeah. A little higher. Yeah. So you can see, basically, if you're feeding the cable in through there, you can see that 
This is holding, you can see the little mini teeth there which are holding the insulation and this is the cutter and so that's basically going to try and pull, or it's going to pull that spare insulation that you don't need anymore away like that and then reset. So I'll just do it on a bit of cable and we'll show you and if it works well, I just need to actually turn it around. You're right mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm putting it in here and if we're successful then you will see some brand new oh, there we go not the cleanest in the world no it was it, right. it, had, it had some solder on the end of it as well you had to get yeah. through that do as it well. again there you go that's what you want so you can see it's even stayed on there which you can just pull off don't get copper on but not on fingernail not on film but basically that's <laughs> of course not. it's never going to work while they're filming you want to side cutter it yes while staying. See, these have got holes in them as well. Do you want to hand him the side cutters and he'll do it? Yes, okay. Beautiful. Anyway, I hope everyone saw that. I love that action. It's just... It's beautiful. It is, it is an epiphanic moment when it, and does when it, it work, goes... But does it work on all different sizes? Does it work on all different sizes of, mm -hmm. of um, wire? Like, it will work on that. I have trouble at home, mm -hmm. and I don't know if anyone else has, has had this problem as well, if you've ever tried to uh, strip strip wire, mm. um, strip insulation from wire, I've had trouble with really small wires. Like for instance, if you got into some Cat5, like some um, some internet cord, you know, the, the internet cords and stuff, stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah, or even smaller. When I've tried to use my method of using side cutters to cut oh, around cut it, it and strip it, I, I can't get the pressure pressure right. So C can you tune these to do such a job? Because because they work on friction, they they don't. You can get you can get a bunch of again. You can get so many different types of this. This one works on friction, and so it it you don't need a specific size of insulation. It will it will cut as far as it cuts. If it's too small, then it might pull the, the cable, the right. copper out okay, as so well. there might be a limit but to it, yeah. That, that may well do it. You can also get ones that are very specific, that have tiny little, uh, you know, holes, basically, for for cutting very, very specific very small things. things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But these work better because these, these do the job for everything. Okay. With it, these have a much wider range. So you right. can basically use that on most of your mains cable, you can do it on bigger stuff, you can use smaller as well. So in the workshop, how many of these would you have lying around the workshop, this well, type of thing? Ideally, it'd be good to have one per bench. I think we've got about that here. I think we've got about half a dozen and they're invaluable and they, they are shared. Before the time of coronavirus, they were shared from uh, bench to bench. Beautiful, I see what you've done there. I was going to gift you some, but now I feel... I feel like Will I'm you? not going to get And now I've spoiled it by trying to steal it. one. <laughs> yes. By trying to steal it on air. Live. Terrible. <laughs> I wasn't going to do such a thing, surely. So, um, yeah, fantastic. So that's... Do you want to go through, is there anything else, else in the we, box? What else have we got here? Peaking your interest. Um, yeah, or, I've, um, the solder suckers are pe peaking my interest. Just because I like the action of them. Mm -hmm. Just because you do that and then you, there you've got the... The um, it actually it's actually sucking in, isn't it? So again, that that's something that we would probably cover, or we would definitely cover on the soldering workshop uh, if we were to do it. Um, that is basically what when I was showing you before the the melting solder. That can I show you this, works, Shane? You want to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, pretty close up. Yeah. That basically works as a vacuum. It sucks out all of your spare. So if you if you're trying to remove solder from a circuit board or from a wire or from something, that will basically suck through and just go right. and take all so that molten you solder out. You charge it like that, so it basically pushes the piston up here, and when you release it, the piston quickly races back down here and just and suck stuff in. And solder will actually, molten solder will get sucked up inside that. Yeah, that's the idea. So, I, I don't like know if it. we want to ask, is anyone asking any questions or? No, just a lot of interest in, um, in, in doing videos later where we see repairs and where we see soldering. Okay. Um, somebody mentioned that a lot of kids' toys have those triangular screws, which... Yeah. Oh, really? Well, uh, please, I think into that. Because oh, uh, I don't have any children, maybe that's, maybe that's why I haven't encountered the triangular screws, I guess. That's something we're going to look into later as well with um, a couple of videos. 
how to open things, which would be yeah. good. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Look, I mean, that's sure. that's something. I mean, this is a general overview of, of what we would need to use, but um, but we'll definitely go into specifics. And so, if anyone has, uh, oh, tape. There you go. Invaluable. Um, so important to have tape as well. I mean, I've, 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 there's so many. You know, I've got a bucket at home, and I put all my tapes in there. And I thought, I'm not going to need a whole bucket to have all my all my, you know, is it over for, for tape? It's, I, I can hardly fit any more tape in there. I've got lots of different types of plumber's tape. I've now got some silver tape that I got from the Bower. A lot of this stuff I get from the Bower as well. I just love wandering around the Bower and picking electronic things. You have really, things out. You have really presented yourself as a, as a like, a ar archetyp archetypical? There we go. Thank you. An archetypical, archetypical Bower. Archetypical Bower bird. Bower bird, yes, I have. Um, and so, electrical tape, um, and I've got lots of other different types of tapes as well. But electrical tape is what it is, is because it almost acts like plastic insulation, doesn't it? So when we were speaking about this here before with the, ins with the insulation, it gives a very good insulation level and it's it's very plasticine-y, so you mm -hmm. can wrap it around things. Is that the purpose? I'm sure that's the purpose. Well, I mean, yeah, it. definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly not the preferred method because it's temporary, but yes. In yeah. a temporary sense, it's really good insulator. So exactly yes. like like that sheath that we pulled off the copper before, you could use tape to temporarily tape, you know, uh, insulate something if you wanted to dummy something up, if you were testing if something was going to work or not. Yeah. You always use tape so you don't do something permanent and then have to undo it if you mess up. Yeah. Stop so using the tape. So that's electrical tape. Yep. Important. Consumable item. Yes. Oh, they love consumable items, don't they? So they love solder. And they love tape. What other electronic consumable items are they? Are there? I mean, there's electronic boards and that sort of stuff. But um, anything they can keep on making us buy and consume. <laughs> Remember, people, Big Brother's making you consume. I'd say cleaners as well. Um, I've only got five minutes left, but I was having such a good time. We can do oh, cleaners, of course. Oh yeah, contact cleaners. <gasps> we didn't get to contact cleaners. It doesn't matter. Is this like contact cleaner, isn't it? It's. No, it doesn't work in the same way. It's, it's no. not, it's not going to um, conduct in the same way. But it will clean. Alcohol, always use it. Always. Yeah. Um, Kill but, viruses as well. Because we're getting to the end. I uh, want to wrap up, talk a cup, talk about a couple of little things. I know that uh, a lot of you will have already seen that we've got uh, a beautiful um, refurbishment of the of the Bowers website. Oh, the Bowers website. Thank you very much. Which Andre was a massive, massive part. So yes. thank you. That looks fantastic. Um, okay. Do you want to talk about some of the events coming up? The yeah, sure. Tiny um, so yes, first thing is the tiny house auction. So the Bower runs a tiny house program every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you uh, come in and do that course, you can pay a fee. You can actually do that in the new eShop on the um, on the Bower website now. If you come in and pay for that course, you help as part of the community to actually build the tiny house. It's amazing. Uh, and they do it all with re recycled goods and... And, um, and, and there's, and pic there's like pictures timbers. up on the website as well, isn't Yes, there is. There's a gallery up there. And actually someone's just given me a 360 degree video walk around to oh, put up wow. there as well. So um, oh, once cool. we finish what we're doing today, tonight I'm going to put that up as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so here to go. Here to go. Fantastic. Um, so... And they'll be auctioning that and off. They're going to be auctioning that off next Saturday. Next Saturday. Is that that's right, isn't it? It's online, right? Yes, yes, it's online. So next Saturday, and the auction for the first time is going to be online through RKTA Auctioneers. If you go to the Bow website, the new Bow website, mm -hmm. and you go to the homepage, the first slide that comes up uh, is about the about the uh, the tiny house online auction. Fantastic. And what you have to do if you want to bid on the tiny house, you go to that page, you go to the auctioneers page, and you register to bid. So you actually say, I am going to be a bidder in this in this auction. So if anyone has seen photos of it, they are truly, they are stunning. They're shells, so you can basically do what you want. It's on the back it's of a trailer. Like, so you, you just, you just, you, just put, <laughs> you hitch it up onto the back of your four wheel drive and you're off. Mm -hmm. um, can so, they register now? Is that open yet? Yes, it is. Um, I just changed it last night. So, so if they go, if they go to um, Gracie, if they go to um, uh, the Bowers website, then all they have to do... <laughs> it's beautiful. No, 
tiny house, tiny house yes. option. Yeah. If they go to the Bowers website, then all that, all you gotta do is click on the first slide and then you go to that page and it'll mm -hmm. actually say register to bid now on the website. And all you've gotta do is just click on the link cool. and you'll go straight there and you just you have to go through their process to register to bid though. Okay. That's right. So you don't you don't mm -hmm. you don't register on the Bowers website, mm -hmm. you register on the auctioneer's website. So, but it's um I wish I could buy it. I want I, it. I would love to own one. Um Oh yeah. And we're gonna be live next, next week, week in the tiny in house. Tiny house. Well. So furniture guys. Yeah, not you guys. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Well we did so well. <laughs> you did do well, but it um, won't be you. Um yeah, so if anyone wants to see it, I mean the 360 walkthrough, um, but also if you actually want to see it live, see uh, Luke and Ash, um, the woodworkers, uh, walk through the tiny house. They'll definitely be talking about how they made it. What Are they, they doing used. that before the auction? I assume doing so. it on same time next week, so 11 a.m. next week. And but when's the auction? What time? It's during, hmm? So same day. 6 p.m. Yep. on that day. So oh, you, right, so you're doing it before the auction. Fantastic. Yeah. So you can do a live walkthrough. Thanks, through. Gracie. <laughs> Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, you'll be able to answer them live. They'll be able to, to go through them then. Cool. Nice uh, another thing, again, you'll be able to speak in more detail, but we've got a survey. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. This in the top oh, comment on this. In the top comment, there yeah. you go. Um, ah, so if you comment. want to go to that, you can tell us what you want to see, what you don't want to see, why you don't want to see it. I don't know how much detail you can go into. So it's a survey for this particular open session. For yeah. these live Feedback videos, for these yeah. live things on, on how wonderfully we did and how awesome we were and, um, and yeah, and um, uh, what else you might, what other topics you might want to And have. last thing, because the bower is bursting at the seams with ideas and even in this time of kind of weirdness and crisisness, uh, we are trying to do as much as possible for the community and so we're also opening up um, for remote one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, that's for electrical items, that's for woodwork. You can basically talk to one of the Bauer um, employees, volunteers, one of the repairers, um, about a specific item. Um, that is a paid service. Do you know anything? Uh, you know, service? it's free at the moment. We're making it. Yeah, we're making it completely free at the moment. Um, we had a bit of a chat about it, and we're like, should we make a contact? That's a great idea. idea. Let's to start cool. off with. Let's do free mm -hmm. um, so let's go for um, uh, so it's 15 minutes mm -hmm. via zoom mm -hmm. um, and I, I hadn't used zoom before because everyone's been stuck in their houses all the time now I've, now everyone knows no zoom mm -hmm. um, and the next uh, uh, also when will we be here next that's not this week coming this weekend coming because that's the tiny house option mm -hmm. when the when the furniture guys will be mm -hmm. there but the next weekend yeah. Fortnightly, Saturday, yeah. 11 a.m. And uh, I think we'll be continuing to just go woodwork, electrical, woodwork, electrical until everyone yeah. knows everything. And the topic? The topic, Ooh. yes. Um, I think we'll We've got two choices, but we don't know which one we're going to have. Well, um, what were our two if choices? The people watching want to want to comment what they're most interested in. The first one is uh, general maintenance and servicing. So that's anything from vacuuming dust out. Uh, it's kind of non-electrical, yeah. But it's but it's really important. Maintenance yeah. is more. Yeah. It, if you can maintain your item, you're going to need to repair it less. Yes, that's important. Yes. The other one is uh, I have had a complete blank. What is the other one? Oh, the other one um, is um, testing, um, fault finding, um, fault finding. Fault finding, which is a massive process. But <laughs> but we will try and talk, fault finding in one hour. Talk about what we do, where we start, when something comes in. We'll probably do a dummy item as well, or two, and yeah, get uh, you know get an item in and just go where where on earth do you start when something comes in? Whether it's simple, whether it's complex. Mm. Massive. I'd really things. like to see that and the pat test stuff. You're going to do more than see it. You're going to you're going to present. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Um, I think that's about all we've got now. Um, I think the live Fantastic. session is are we waving? Is over, and I think we're about to wave goodbye. Thank you so much, Griffin. Is, is there is there like dance out music as well? No, so rolling sorry, credits. You can, you can <laughs> sing it yourself if you want. Remember the survey. Remember the tiny house option. Remember the survey. Remember the one on one consultations. Get involved. Um, Just like yeah. the Facebook um, page. Um, we all love the Bower. We all love the Bower community, and thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Griffin. Thank you, Andre.